Hello everyone, Shauna here coming to you once again from Norwalk home this Sunday. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all staying safe. We're um, continuing to go on with our pandemic life here in isolation. And I have um, recently deviated, as I said, from my shelves and I'm reading recommendations from around the internet, specifically BookTube. And this week, I'm coming to you with um, a recommendation for a book that had been on my reading list, my wider reading list, which contains about 600 books almost. Uh, <laughs> so probably more than I'll ever read, some of which will probably get removed from that list, but uh, others always take their places. Anyway, um, I'm going to show that book to you now. Let me show you as I share my screen. This is the book. It's called Infidel My Life by Ayan Hirsi Ali. And it was published um, originally in 2006, came to the United States in 2007. Um, I read the reprint version, the Kindle version that you see here. Um, it was originally published by Atria Books, and I read the recorded books um, audio translation as at audio uh, version, I should say. Um, the book was written in English, although Ali speaks at least four languages. Um, she wrote this book in English. She writes in English. Um, very interesting book, very interesting. This is the story of um, Ayan and her family, as you might expect, and um, and their um, life in, she grew up in Mogadishu in Somalia in the 70s. And um, Somalia in the 70s was a fractured place full of uh, tribal conflicts. It, um, right after her family um, had started to grow up, she talks about growing up in her family with her father uh, being absent quite a bit and her mother and her grandmother teaching her um, where she came from. She talks about the cultural importance of knowing your lineage and, and knowing where you come from for various practical and cultural reasons that that's the case. And um, her father was involved in a, um, a, a revolution against um, the rebels in his country against uh, Syed Barre, who was the president at the time, and who became, as he um, ascended and gained power, um, he went from being respected and loved to being hated. He um, ended up instituting a lot of mass executions and a lot of pain for the Somali people in several um, in several countries throughout Africa. And she talks about this in the book. Um, her family fled from Somalia when she was young. I think she was about seven or nine years old when they first left Somalia. They went to um, her mother wanted to go to another Muslim country um, because uh, they didn't want to be in infidel territory. And they had a difficult time getting out of the country because of the conflicts going on. So they ended up um, going to Saudi Arabia. They um, spent some time in Saudi Arabia, which is... Uh, sort of the cradle of Islam. It's where Islam was born, 
Um, if you want to be a a Muslim and you you go back to sort of the holy land of Islam, Saudi Arabia is where you go. So she she talks about her experiences in Saudi Arabia, and then she talks about they went um, to Kenya. Uh, she spent most of her growing up years in Kenya. And they spent some time also in Ethiopia, which was um, predominantly a Christian country. Um, Muslim influences, certainly, but more, more Christian than any of the other places that she had been. But for her um, growing up and as she, excuse me, negotiated her her teenage years, definitely um, Kenya was the place that she called home. And she talks poignantly about each of the places where she was. And, and as she gets older and you begin to see perspective on her and, and growing up and growing up in um, Islamic culture and Muslim culture, um, you begin to see a little bit how they're a little bit different. And you begin to see how the political structures in the different countries failed, not just because they were um, Islamic countries, but just because of a lack of infrastructure, political um, upheaval, a lot of mismanagement. And she talks a little bit about those things uh, when she was um, when she was a, a young lady, she left Kenya and she left her family and she went to the Netherlands. She, she fled to the Netherlands in 1992, um, when she was 22 and she gained, um, citizenship there. And she spent quite a long time in the Netherlands. Um, she became a Dutch citizen. She became a um, politician. And she began to speak out about what she saw as the threat of radical uh, Islamic teaching, not, not the um, peaceful teachings of Islam that teach compassion and concern for the poor and almsgiving and the pillars, but the radical um, Islamic governmental peace that, that seeks to create um, a theocracy and perpetuate that theocracy um, worldwide throughout the world. She talks a little bit about that in here. She talks about her um, crisis of faith, the, the faith and her um, critique of Islam and why. And it's a very interesting book. It makes you think on a lot of levels. She is um, one of the most articulate writers that I've ever read. And you can find her um, political uh, reflections and her her observations all over the web. And I highly suggest that if you have any interest in Islam, in the uh, Islamic world in particular, um, also in the influence of Islam in, in uh, Western culture, um, that you check out her work. She, she left um, the Netherlands and she immigrated to the United States in 2013. And she's been working in the US uh, for various think tanks and giving various speeches and debates on the need for um, reform and open discourse and um, civil but 
but sharp debate about various issues in popular culture. And she's paid the price for her, her views. She is completely estranged from her family of origin. She, um, she's under police protection because she's been threatened by various um, Islamic groups. And she, um, she still is criticized as uh, a traitor to, to Islam and uh, many times a traitor to freedom, which if you really read her work and you read what she has to say, um, you may not agree with that. This book was eye-opening in a lot of ways. Hard to read in some places for sure, um, but she definitely has uh, a lens through which to speak as someone who was raised in four different countries growing up, um, three of which were predominant Muslim countries, grew up as a Muslim and um, only after the terrorist attacks of 2001 uh, when she started looking critically at her own uh, adherence to Islam and eventually renounced it, did she uh, actually renounce the religion? And uh, she calls herself an atheist, but she is one of the most articulate and commanding voices uh, of civility and yet strength around. This book is definitely worth your time. And she wrote another um, autobiographical work that I haven't read yet, but I'm definitely going to return to her work. And as I said, I think that if you're um, the least bit interested in any sort of um, topics of Islam and its effects or cultural influences in the Middle East, in Africa, um, you should look at her story. Her story can teach you a tremendous amount and it's very articulate and it's, it's very deep. So anyway, that's all I have for you this week. Um, hopefully I'll be out with another video soon. Hope you're all safe, everyone. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye for now.